Find it with f equals 2.03 and f of 2. Why do I have to do both? Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Uh, so now, now this D, the dy is really what you're going to be doing in, in this course. So the dy, I mean, we. You know, you, you need to know delta x. Your delta x is 0 0.03, so your dx is 0 0.03. They're, they're the same. They're always the same. And so you have to be able to take a derivative. You need So d, uh, dy here is y prime. So you got to find y prime. So that's where you've learned all these derivatives. Could you tell me the derivative of this thing, please? Um, negative sine... Or negative two sine, uh, cosine. Wait, hold on. Let me work this out real quick. Okay. Okay. Uh, two x times negative sine x squared plus one. What about this part? Oh, minus one. Okay, very good. And then you multiply all of that by dx. Now you have to do minus sine of two squared plus one times two times two minus one all times 0 0.03. Okay. And I can just plug those into my calculator, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's kind of the starting point of all this that you're uh, working on here. Um, we can do some more problems. Yeah. Any, any questions or thoughts before we move on to some problems from your book? Uh, no, not really. Okay. All right. So the let's look at this first grouping of questions 9 through 26 and um, see if there's any in here that kind of stand out to you. Basically, you got to be able to take the derivative for all of these. I mean, I don't see anything you haven't seen before. I think maybe we'll start with 12. Let's start with 12 here. Um, dy is y prime times dx. So you've got to be able to very carefully take a derivative of that. So, okay. So, 20 or 32 times 5 minus 8x cubed. Uh, so, before 5 minus 8x to the power of 3 <laughs> times negative 8. Simplifies negative 32, 5 minus 8x cubed times dx. That's your that's what your that's what your teacher instructor is uh is looking for. Okay. And I just put dx, like I don't have to do anything else. That's it. Oh, okay. There's nothing more to do, as far as I can tell. So um, that's where that's where I'm not quite sure here where you guys are going. Do you, it, maybe you have some other examples from class. Maybe we could do this one um, before we talk, I don't know, about error and some other things. Yeah. Okay, so negative 1.7 times e to the negative 1.7x times dx. Yeah, that's dy. Okay. I could do that. So that all seems pretty straightforward here. Um, what kinds of problems are you getting in class? Um, we did, like, he would give us, one of the problems we did was, like, 
y equals sine x, and then um, he just said x equals one, and he gave us an like a an, uh, delta x of 0 0.2, and we found the delta y and the okay. error. All right, now now your your error. So your error is different than my my error. Error. This is the error that I see. It's either it's usually delta y, which is approximated by dy. It's it's over the actual like output. Yeah. I heard something slightly different. From um, you. we did error is delta y minus dy. Like this. Yeah. Okay. Well. That's fine. Um, it, I mean, is this, does this encompass like what we, I mean, did you have any other examples besides this? I mean, this is. Um, we also did f of x equals 15 minus x cubed. And then he gave us the points to, um, an anchor point of two, x equals two, and y equals seven. Y equals then, seven, you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then we did the same thing, solving delta y dx, or delta y and then dy. Okay. And so, yeah. All right, so that like the problems that I'm used to seeing here are uh, more of the, of the like, uh, word problems. Yeah, I do have a page of like the word problems that I sent you, one ninety five, but I don't know if they like correlate or not. They're not. They're kind of weird. I mean, there's 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 more standard ones here that we can do. Um, yeah, maybe let's just do the standard ones. Yeah. So it says a sphere was measured and its radius was found to be 45 inches with a possible error of no more than 0 0.01 inches. That's your dy, or I'm sorry, your dx or dr, depending on the problem. So uh, what is the maximum possible error in the volume if we use this value of the radius? So you have to start with the volume. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Could you calculate the uh, the derivative for us, please? Yeah. 4 pi r squared, or yeah, 4 pi r squared. dr times dr. So this is okay. 4 pi, and then your radius is 45 squared times 0 0.01. So if you have a calculator, why don't you calculate that for us, please? Okay. Um, Two hundred and fifty-four point four seven. Yes, we're good. And so the uh, the other thing I guess you ought to calculate is delta v, which is v of forty-five point zero one minus v of forty-five, and that's that's using the original. Okay. So I so I plug 45.01 into the first equation. Yes. Okay. One eighty-eight point five four for the first one, and then okay. F two forty-five, right? Yeah, you got to do the next one, which would be it'd be, it'd be pretty close. Um, one minus one eighty-eight 
point five zero. So then delta v equals point wait point zero six. Okay. Any questions on that? And so point zero six is my that's the delta, delta v. v. Yeah. I was just trying to come up with another problem for you to do that's like this. Okay. Okay. There, there is a direction you're going here, which I guess is tangent lines. Yeah. But I'm not not sure. You said or linear approximations. Uh, no, not not totally sure. But did you did you happen to talk about that? The tangent line. Yeah, we did. It's like Different. f of x, l of x. Yes. Is what we did. Yeah. yeah. That's 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 related here. Um, do you just want us to do more problems like this, or do you have some other things you want us? To Go back to the book and do those problems, the word problems. Um, I guess let's do the word problems from the book, even okay. though they're weird. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want me to start at four? Um, maybe let's do five. Okay. Yeah, five. All right, so the steepness of a hill problem on roads and hilly areas, you sometimes see signs like this, deep hill, 20% grade. You actually never see that, that because that's crazy steep um, for roads. 6% um, is a lot, 7% is a lot. The grade of a hill is the slope, rise, run, written as percentage or equivalently as the number of feet the hill rises per 100 feet horizontally, shows the letter meaning of grade. When you're driving really fast, you don't notice it, but it's it's pretty severe in a lot of these cases. Okay, yeah. so that's that's the picture here of this nice trolley going up a steep slope, probably in San Francisco. Always fun to do that. Um, oh, the trolley rides at Winter Haven. I'm seeing those signs around town now. Yeah. All right, so here we go. We got uh, part A it says, let X be the grade of the hill. Explain why the angle theta degrees that hill makes with the horizontal is given by this equation um boy they, very weird if you're just a normal person you would write the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent which is x over 100. Okay. and if you were to solve for theta you would take the inverse tangent of both sides So this answer, this answer is currently in radians. You remember how to convert from radians to degrees? Uh, multiply by 180 over pi. That's right. So there you have it. Now you know, now you know how that part. Okay. Okay, part B. Part B, it says find an equation for d theta in terms of x and dx. So they're basically asking, I know it's really weird, they're asking for they're asking to take the derivative of of this thing here. Okay. So this is an inverse tangent. It's a little horrible. Um, could you give that a try though, please? Oh, I need like the equation, right? Uh, you it, you can look up the derivative for inverse tangent if you need. I can provide a reference if you need that. Um. It's the one over one plus x squared thing, right? Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. How would I do that? <laughs> So it's really it's really this. Uh, 
derivative if if it's y equals arc tangent inverse of u. I kind of use I, I like u here because it's it's better for the chain rule. The derivative is one over one plus u squared times u prime. U u represents whatever's in parentheses. You're squaring whatever's in parentheses, and then you're multiplying by the derivative of whatever's in parentheses. Does that help? Yeah, so d theta equals over 1. Okay, so 180 over pi times 1 over 1 plus x over 100. Squared okay. times... What times, you, what's the derivative of the oh, outside function? Um, one? No. X negative one. Wait, I actually don't know. One X over one hundred. Oh, times whatever. It's the okay. constant times x. Yeah. Okay. But then you multiply all of that by by dx. By uh, Okay. All right. Any and what is, questions? What does it mean by the zero percent, ten percent, and twenty percent? Yeah, what we're gonna is... do that next. So we're gonna make a little table here. Uh, X. So zero percent means that X is X is actually zero. Oops. So we should we should calculate the uh, d theta here. Mm -hmm. at zero um are you comfortable calculating something like this or is this really really challenging um I'm actually... what do like you mean by some... what do you, you mean by calculating the data putting all of this in the calculator uh, yeah i can just plug that in i can do that okay and then d theta Yeah, in terms of dx, I see. Okay. All right. I'm plugging zero in for x, right? Yes. And let's round to, I don't know, we'll go four decimal places. Okay. And wait, what am I putting in for dx? Nothing. It's so it says in terms of dx, which means your answer is gonna have a dx in it. Okay. So I got 0. 0.57. Okay, let's go out a couple more decimal places like that. Mm -hmm. And then for for 10%, that's really x equals 10. Uh, if you want an explanation of why, uh 10% means it rises 10 feet every 100 feet of run. Okay. It's not really it's not really what you're used to in terms of percentages, but um, point five six seven three. All right, and then do it for twenty percent. And that just means twenty, right? Or x yes. equals twenty. Okay. Point five five zero nine. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? No. Part C says that you can estimate you can estimate theta at x equals twenty percent by simply multiplying d theta at x equals zero by twenty. How much error is there in using the values of theta found by using this method rather than by using the exact formula that involves the inverse tangent more? Okay. So uh the first thing is that we should we should actually figure out what theta is when x is 20 so we're going back to this this equation right here the first one okay and we should we should just we should just evaluate it x
Make sure your calculator's in radians for this. Okay. I got 11, yeah, point three. Okay, so now they're saying, but hey, you can do it this way by simply multiplying d theta at x equals zero by 20. So take your result at zero, okay. multiply that by 20, and you'll get pretty close to that number there. Point five seven two nine. And so the error, the error is the difference. Between them. Between eleven point five zero and eleven point four five eight? Yeah. Okay. Times twenty. Wait, uh, am I doing 11.50 and 11.30? So 0. 0.2? Sure. Yeah. All right. The point is it's very small. Very small. Yeah. Okay, point 0.2. Wow. All right. All right, part D, we want to do it. Rule of thumb, you can use to estimate the number of degrees a hill makes with the horizontals to divide the grade by two. Where in your work for part C did you divide by approximately two? Okay. Um, is that part C? Part C. Divide by two. Um, so you, you kind of do in part B, this 100 times pi is you know, 320, 180 divided by 320 is about two, about one half. But I don't, I don't see that in uh, part, part C. Three. Uh so they're saying here, and this this is kind of like out of scope, but they're saying like, just take the 20 and divide it by two, that's 10. Take the 100 and divide it by two, that's 50. And then go like the actual one at 20%. We'd want to calculate theta of 20, which we did. Theta of 20 was 11.3 degrees. Yeah. And you can see it's not bad. Like that's okay. So now we want to calculate theta of 100. Okay. So I'm going to go back to this this formula here and put in theta of 100. And get 45? 45. So I don't know. It depends on whether you think that's OK or not. It just depends. Oh, wait. I totally get that. Because it's close to the 10 and 45 is close to 50, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like I put on a suit yesterday, way too big. Uh, you know, you get a you get a dress doesn't fit right. Like, how much error can you tell tolerate? Depends on the, you know, probably okay for a winter formal, not okay for a wedding. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, who knows, right? Depends on the situation. Yeah. So truly, really, like everything beyond kind of part E was a little just weird. Um, so we'll. Uh, do you want us to do seven or do something else? Um, what about 41? We can come back to seven, I think. But... Did you say uh, 21? 41. 41. I. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So for 41, you are first asked to find dy. So you have to be able to take a derivative of this. This yeah. is a product rule derivative. So it's the uh, the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. 
something like that. And then it's all times. I keep doing that. It's dx, not dy. All right. Now, just for your this is this is the common question you got in the AP exam where they ask you to take a derivative of this. Mm -hmm. So really quickly, like here's how you would simplify this. Only because I think you 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 may may see this question again. Uh, you look you look at the numbers. They both have a two and a three, and a two and a three. So you can factor a six out of both. Mm -hmm. And then there's a three x plus four in both to the power of one. And then there's a two x minus five in both to the power of two. And then inside here, you, what well, you figure out? Well, what's left over? Well, I got I got one three x plus four. So basically you're like you're like keeping track of what you've you know I've dealt with that, I've dealt with that, I've dealt, dealt with that. Plus uh you got one two x minus five. Like that. And then uh you 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 combine like terms here for this last one. Okay. So this is the way the answer is presented on the the AP multiple choice is something like this. Okay. All right, so that's that's part A. Uh -huh. Any questions on that? No, just derivative. So. Yep, just derivative. So part B is to find dy for those values. So yeah, x is one, three times one plus four, two times one minus five, five times one minus one, times negative point zero four. You get some sort of a number. Okay. So that's B? Yes. Part, uh, part C is to find delta Y, which is going to be Y of 0.96 minus Y of 1. It's it's x plus delta x it just happens to be negative, so that's why I got smaller. So you got to put one point nine six and one back into that, and then subtract. Wait, we're plugging it into the dy, not the regular equation. The original, original. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, so for y of 0.96, I got negative 1,000. Okay, I wasn't going to calculate them, but we can, okay. yeah. Negative 1,383. Um. And so what we're, what we're interested in really is in part B, which is like, is delta Y close to DY? So you have, you'd have to calculate both B and C to know if they were close. Wait, what do you mean calculate B and C? B, B is a number, like the DY, this line here. Oh, okay. This is some sort of a number. This is some sort of a number. And you're hoping that they're really, really close to each other. Okay. And then D equals delta Y close to DY. Okay. I can do that. Any, uh, any thoughts on that? Um, well, I really don't know how to do that one, or like that kind of like thing. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know. This this is pretty pretty. Uh, th there's not much here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you have other stuff you want us to cover tonight? Um, I mean, 
Do you know if you're going to do tangent lines next? I have no idea. I'm I think sorry, I could sorry. Uh, linear approximations. They're, they're, they are tangent lines, but I, you got to call them that. Well, that's like what this lesson was on. Like, that's the title of the lesson. But I don't see how any of this relates to tangent lines. So. Yeah. Well, it, it does, but it, it's not the right way to do it. Um, <laughs> Do you want us to do some tangent line problems, linear approximation yeah. problems? Yeah. Okay. So the uh, we're going to choose a pretty basic one here. Um, this is how they kind of start out. They say, like, how would you calculate this? How would you calculate this without uh, a calculator using a linear linear approximation? Okay. So the first thing is you got to figure out like what is the function here? Like it's not like like they're asking you for sixteen point two, but that's not the function. What what is the like what do you see here? What do you think um, f of x is? I have no idea if I'm like being completely honest. Okay, how about how about square root of x? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And what is the x value? Um, sixteen point two. Close. It's 16. And what is delta x? Oh, 0.2. Zero point two. Okay. All right. Now, do you kind of see how, like, do you think now that you've seen one, you could kind of figure out, like, oh, it's yeah, it's these. Okay. So you you mentioned this before. For the linear approximation, you need to evaluate the function. You need, um, let me write it here. You need uh, f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. Does that sound familiar? Yes. I've okay. That. Great. So this is really your a. Okay. So could you, let's do it in pieces here. What's f of a? What's the square root of 16? Four. No. Okay. Yeah. Four, you don't have really <laughs> good. What's f prime of x? Uh, how do I have a prime if, oh, do I have to do x times one half, x to the power of one half? Yep, take the derivative of the square root of x. So one half x to the power of negative one half. Okay, and then you have to evaluate that at 16. Um, I can use my calculator, right? Of course, I'm not anti-calculator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Point one two five. Okay. You said one two five one eight. Okay. The um, so now we've got enough to put this in. So L of X equals four plus one eighth X minus sixteen. And okay. so we're trying. We're trying to. We want to know what sixteen point two is. So L of sixteen point two equals. Four plus one eighth, sixteen point two minus sixteen. Could you uh, could you calculate that for us, yeah. please? Four point zero two five. And then could you calculate the uh, the square root of uh, sixteen point two? 4.0249, so 0 0.025. Okay, so pretty good. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna like we're gonna like get a picture of like what are you actually doing here because it's really it's pretty unclear. Um, this is the square root of x, and we're interested. We were interested at the point uh, 16 comma four, which is not on the graph here. So let's make it on the graph. There's our point. Okay, and now we're going to draw the uh, the equation of the tangent line or the linear approximation. Four plus one eighth x minus sixteen. Okay. So when you if we zoom in here, kind of looks like they're the same, doesn't it? Like they're right on top of each other. Yeah. But if we zoom out. 
we'd see that they eventually there's some there's a gap right mm -hmm. so the the idea here is that a, a the linear approximation is only good nearby okay only good nearby okay and you you would kind of believe that here yeah okay so where you're going this is just me opining a little bit um sine of x sine of x um let's just make this go from uh minus pi over two two pi over two over two okay all right so now this is sine x and uh you don't know this yet but you can actually approximate sine x with a uh, polynomial. That's pretty good, right? That line's pretty good, but then it doesn't have the curve to it. Yeah. But if I add this in, look gets a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. And if I add this in, gets even better. Can you can you tell the difference between them? No. <laughs> So that's uh, that's where you're going. Not in this class. Calculus too. If you ever get there, want to get there, you can get there. But that's okay. where you're going. <laughs> yeah. Um, you don't you don't do this. This is what this is numerical analysis. But this is this is taught in the course. So basically, like you can get a pretty good approximation of things if you go out with a bunch of these terms, and that's kind of what we're doing here. Now, if you if I re take this restriction away, and oh, it's hard to see. Let me let me go back to that one. So what am I doing here? <laughs> okay. Um, see how it, it quickly moves away from the purple? Yeah. Like it's it's terrible over here. Like like you you would never use that but it's pretty good there. It's pretty good there, but then it's you know, gone. Yeah. So that's the idea. The linear approximation is only good in uh, certain certain regions of the graph. All right, a few minutes left here if you want. What else can we talk um, about? I guess let's do problem seven because I don't know what else to do. All right, well, we can talk about seven. Seven's a terrible question. Money okay. is not compounded continuously. <sighs> I wish it was, but it's not. Okay, uh, Lisa invest six thousand dollars. That's kind of important. You can do a Roth IRA, six thousand dollars a year, five percent annual interest. That's terrible interest rate. You want much higher than that. Compound continuously. That never happens. She wants to know how much money she earns each day. She she finds five percent of six thousand and divides by three hundred and sixty-five. About how much will she earn the first day? So you're basically taking five percent, point zero five times 6,000 and dividing it by 365. Could you uh, calculate that for us, please? Yeah. Point 0.822. So about 82 cents a day is what she's earning. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right, part B, part B says, this is how much money is given in the account after T days. And uh, they want you to find a DM, the derivative, in terms of DT. So your answer is gonna have a DT here at the end. So could you uh, could you attempt to calculate that for us, please? Um, no, so no simplifying, if you don't mind, just. 6,000 times point zero five divided by 365 times e to the power of that fraction times t very good okay times dt so that's dm okay. does dm give you about the same answer i'm just reading on here does dm give you about the same answer as part a on the first day using dt equals one. So basically, you got to grab your calculator, 
and dt equals one, t equals zero. Does this give you the same answer? Okay, 6,000 times Uh, 0.82. I don't know if they equal the same, but I'm assuming they do. They do equal the same. Okay. okay. Uh, but that's that's just aberration. The reason they equal the same is because this term goes away, goes to one, and that's the same calculation we just did. It will not go away for t equals something other than um, one. So, um, that's, I mean, it's kind of silly, but how much interest would uh, the difference to DM predict Lisa would earn in the first 30 days? So T equals 30. I guess you can calculate DM for that. Okay. Well, what would the DT equal or the... They're, they're, they're suggesting using a one for it. So 8.26? For the first 30 days? Yeah. Huh. Doesn't seem like enough. All right. Can you do it for the first 60 days? Yeah. Hopefully it's more than... 83. That sounds better. What did you get for 30? 8.26. Okay. And then for 60 is 83 point something? Yeah, 0 0.04. Okay. That seems better. Um it's about a dollar a day. That's why the 30, this one seems really off, but I'll just go with it. Okay. Uh, then part C here, it says use the equation in part B to find delta M for the first 30 days. How does the, how does it compare as, uh, as it increases? Basically there, you're trying to decide if, if delta M really approximates DM and I don't know, probably it does. Yeah, I assume it does. I'm just going to go with it does. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to stop there for today.